Hey WWE fan, how are you doing? Pretty good. How have you been? I'm doing good, man. I've just been watching SpongeBob and enjoying my sweet ass horchata. Yeah, you know, um, it's almost been a year since the epic masterpiece known as Mad Max Fury Road, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, the movie you hate. Hey, man, it's just my opinion. You know, just because the movie is praised like hell doesn't mean I have to agree with the majority. You know, it's just how I felt. People loved it. I didn't. And, you know, that's okay. But how can you call something like Pixels a good movie and call Mad Max Fury Road garbage? Says the dude that likes that piece of shit, Get Hard, and actually considers Dude Where's My Car, that shit movie with Ashton Kutcher, his favorite comedy of all time. Like, what the hell, man? You know what, Tony? I'm starting to get really sick and tired of you calling masterpieces pieces of garbage. First Dread, now Mad Max Fury Road? What's wrong with you, dude? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? You liked R.I.P.D. for God's sakes, and that movie sucked ass. What, is that supposed to offend me or something? At least that was a fun, you know, buddy comedy unlike Ride Along. Well, if you're talking Ride Along 2, then yeah. No, the first one that you actually thought was funny. What can I say, man? Kevin Hart in the first film made me laugh my ass off. Oh, and don't even get me started on Spider-Man 3, that atrocious thing called a superhero movie. And how can you say it's worse than Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance? Dude, Nicolas Cage pees fire out of him. Peter Parker dances through the streets of New York and he's emo! I'm sorry, man. That's more tolerable to watch than to see Nicolas Cage pee fire and laugh like a freaking psycho for one hour and 30 shitty minutes. Two hours, Tony! Two hours I had to deal with this! And yet, you find more enjoyment with Leah Thompson having sex with a duck and Howard the Duck than you did with Spider-Man 3. Alright, that's it. I've had enough of this. All right, you want to fight? Then let's fight. Calculating energy levels. Ah! Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Captain America Civil War. So Captain America Civil War is written and directed by the Russo brothers and it is the third installment in the Captain America trilogy. And of course you have the talents of Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, Chadwick Boseman. The cast goes on and on. So Captain America Civil War is about when Captain America and Iron Man have a disagreement after finding out where Bucky Barnes is because after what happened a couple years ago in the Winter Soldier. So they're trying to bring Bucky Barnes in and arrest him but Captain America wants to protect his buddy and even if it means Captain America becoming a criminal, he will. But then there's Iron Man and the others where he wants to take Bucky in because of all the horrible things that he has done. So like I said, it involves a big disagreement. And so you have Captain America and Iron Man, both sides, along with the other Avengers, to have this big battle. All right, uh, it's hard talking in this mess, so let me take that off. Whew. All right, that was fun while it lasted. Now, honestly, just like most people, I was so hyped for Captain America Civil War. This movie is actually my most anticipated movie of 
all of 2016, not just the summer, but just 2016 in general. It was my most anticipated. I couldn't wait to see this film. The trailers looked more exciting the more I was watching them. I couldn't wait for the introduction of Black Panther and of course Spidey now being in the Cinematic Universe. And honestly, I do think the first Avenger, Captain America the First Avenger, is a very underappreciated Marvel film because I just feel like that movie doesn't really get enough credit to be honest. Like I know a lot of people say Captain America started being a badass with the Winter Soldier. I'm actually one of those rare people that has actually loved the character Captain America since the beginning of him being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Winter Soldier is great as well. It's one of my favorite movies of 2014. I just loved how the Winter Soldier changed its tone from the first Avenger and it really worked as being a political spy thriller. That was really awesome in my opinion. Captain America Civil War is seriously awesome. <laughs> like wow. This movie really blew me away. Now the cast is huge in this film and I don't want to forget a single person so I'm gonna go through my phone and actually go through everyone. But of course first off I need to start off with Chris Evans as Captain America. You know it's really cliche to say this but at this point he really embodies Captain America slash Steve Rogers. I thought Captain America was just really great here. Um, you can understand his reasonings for wanting to be on Bucky's side, even if it meant him being a criminal. He still continues to be the character I really sympathize with and care about and understand his reasonings, as I said. Chris Evans is just flat out awesome as Captain America. Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man slash Tony Stark. He continues to be great here. And of all the films we see him as Iron Man, this is definitely where we see Tony Stark slash Iron Man at his darkest. Now, in the other films, Tony Stark is known for being, you know, adding a lot of comic relief and all that. And I love that about the character. And while you do get some of that in this film, this film goes more deeper with his character. I was sympathized with Iron Man as much as Captain America. And just like with Captain America, I'm able to understand where Iron Man is coming from. Scarlett Johansson, still great as Black Widow. I always love her as that character. Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes slash the Winter Soldier. Really great in this film. Anthony Mackie as the Falcon, just flat out awesome. Don Chino continues to be great as War Machine. Jeremy Renner continues to be great as Hawkeye. I always been supportive of Hawkeye since the first Avengers when a lot of people didn't. Uh, so Hawkeye continues to be a great character. Paul Bedney as Vision. I believe I forgot to mention him in my Age of Ultron review, but I thought he was flat out great. I freaking love Paul Bedney as Vision. And I really loved how they handled his character and how his character seems to really have feelings for the next character I'm going to get to, which is Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen. You know, just like with Age of Ultron, she's really great. And I thought they add a little more to her character here in Civil War. She did a great job. Paul Rudd, you know, for the screen time he has as Ant-Man. I'm not going to spoil anything, guys, but all I'm going to say is, Ant-Man, you are the freaking man. You are just awesome. Yeah. Emily Van Kemp as Sharon Carter, who I thought was really good. Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Wow. All I'm going to say is Tom Holland, he pulled off being both Peter Parker and Spider-Man so well. I do love Andrew Garfield's portrayal of Spider-Man. I love Tobey Maguire's portrayal of Spider-Man. But Tom Holland, he was great as Spider-Man, and man, he was so funny. Definitely the movie was funny when it came to his character especially. And it makes me look forward to seeing Spider-Man Homecoming. Not a fan of the title, but the movie itself, I do look forward to it. And then, of course, Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. Wow. What an incredible character. From the first scene, you see this guy. You already get behind his character. His character is very complex. You really understand his reasonings for what go on in the film. He was so badass during the action scenes. And yeah, Chadwick Boseman, this guy has been so impressive. He was great in Get On Up as James Brown. He was great in 42 
as Jackie Robinson. And of course, that little role he had in Draft Day, he was great. He's impressed me in the films I've seen him in, and I'm so glad he has his time to shine in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it just makes me look forward to seeing his solo movie, Black Panther, in 2018, which I do believe Ryan Coogler is directing. It's honestly awesome to see William Hurt back as the general from The Incredible Hulk. And then the last person is Daniel Brühl as Zemo. And all I'll say is, even though he's not in this film too long, I loved him for how he was used. I think him being in the small amount of scenes in this film worked. I can see how people may find him underused, but me personally, I thought they actually used Zemo perfectly. I understood his motivations, and he's honestly one of the most memorable villains in the MCU. I really loved him. and. The thing about him is that he's not a villain that has superpowers and all that. He is a human being, and I loved how complex he actually made his character. Now, the direction of this movie is absolutely just fantastic. This is an expertly made movie, and that's thanks to Joe and Anthony Russo. Man, these guys, they've really done a great job because they've worked on Community. And then they come on board to work on the Winter Soldier and they pull off something that is so different for them to work on and they pull it off so well and the same thing can be said for Captain America Civil War. They do a great job directing this film. The direction is fantastic. How they direct the action scenes, the characters interacting with each other. Honestly, it's flat out fantastic. The writing as well is just as amazing because the thing about Joan Anthony Russo that they do such an excellent job of doing with Civil War is that they give you a great understanding of where both Team Iron Man and Team Captain America are coming from. That they wanted you to really understand the reasons for why some Avenger would be on Team Captain America or Team Iron Man. Action sequences in this film are excellent. Especially, particularly, the airport scene and this action scene between Captain America, Iron Man, and Bucky. Now, of course, you guys want me to talk about the airport scene and my goodness. The airport scene alone is one of the best filmed action scenes I've honestly seen the film in quite some time. That's how you film an action scene. Not only was it a very exciting scene, but I was actually surprised how funny that airport scene was. I thought just watching the trailers, it was just going to be all dramatic and serious. And you could say it does after that, but... That's the thing about this film, it does work when it gets serious, but back to the airport scene, it really works so well having the comic relief that goes on the film to blend in with the dramatic moments that do happen. It's very perfectly balanced. It's just so awesome to see all of those Avengers collide against each other and man, like I said, I just had a big old smile on my face and honestly, it made me wish there were more scenes like that in Civil War because Civil War, it has its funny moments but it's not like an outright funny movie which I do think works personally because for a film like this, you need to have more serious moments than funny moments. That's another thing I do credit the Russo brothers for. They do blend the dramatic moments and the comedic moments very well. From the first scene of Civil War all the way to the end, I was hooked. This is an expertly made film. And I really do mean that. This film was made at an expert level. It's honestly just incredible how one scene would go to another scene that would tie into that other scene and then when you reach the ending, it honestly all makes sense. It doesn't feel convoluted. It really is such a well balanced movie. It's so well executed. The dialogue between all the characters are amazing. Whether it's a dramatic moment or a funny moment, each of the Avengers were great when they interacted with each other. And the thing I loved about this film is that, yes, Captain America and Iron Man are the main focus, but 
each other Avenger has their own time to shine. Like Scarlet Witch, Vision had their own time to shine. Hawkeye, although yes, not in this film that much, he has his own time to shine. And then of course Spidey and Black Panther, they definitely had more time to shine. And I was actually happy that Spidey was in this film longer than I thought. So I'm glad that they gave him enough screen time where even he could shine. And the same thing goes to any other Avenger. You know, <laughs> this film has a huge cast, so it would be hard to mention everyone. But seriously, just everyone did an excellent job acting this film. The storyline is just honestly highly investing. I love the villain Zemo. The film is shot beautifully. It has amazing cinematography. The tone of the film is so perfectly balanced and the score by Henry Jackman is incredible. Honestly, the scores for these Marvel films have just been really great. Even the ones I'm not really a fan of, like I'm not a fan of the first Thor, but I love the score for that film. So it's like even the films I'm not really a fan of in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I even end up loving the scores for those films. So honestly, it's cliche for me to say at this point, but the score is phenomenal in this film. Henry Jackman, you have seriously done it. The score fits for just the overall tone of the film, just how it flows. It honestly just fits for whatever is happening during the movie. But there are a few flaws I do acknowledge in this film. The first one is Crossbones. I do feel like Crossbones could have been easily wiped out of this film. He could have been taken out of the film easily. Crossbones just, honestly, he didn't need to be here. I also do feel like for the first 20 to 30 minutes of the film, even though I love the action, the action does get a little bit shaky. It's like, I don't know what the Russo brothers were doing, but it's like the camera would be just kind of going up and down, up and down, just like a little bit. Like in the opening action set piece, you would see Black Widow or Natasha just like running and and it just gets a little bit shaky as she was just running. So I do feel like the action for the first 20, 30 minutes get, got a little bit shaky. And really the last minor flaw I had with this film is that I do feel like Sharon Carter and Captain America, there's a shoehorned romance plot between them. And honestly, just like with Crossbones, you could have taken that out of the film. That didn't have to be in the film, to be honest. Like I said, it's minor. It's only for a few scenes. So it's not a huge distraction because it's only for a few scenes. But still, for those few scenes that focused on Captain America and Sharon Carter, it wasn't necessary, in my opinion. Overall, you guys, even with those flaws, very minor flaws, you just heard me mention, I consider Captain America Civil War a comic book masterpiece. And I would say that this is now the best installment in the Captain America trilogy, even though I love the first Avenger and the Winter Soldier. As far as the Winter Soldier goes, considering the rating you're going to see me give the film in a little bit, I do think it's about the same, except just a little bit more. I would say Civil War is just a little bit better. But honestly, you guys, I love Civil War, and I am just going to say it right now, I do think it's the best movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's how much this film blew me away. It's an amazing comic book film. It's one of the best movies of 2016. So guys, hands down, I am indeed giving Captain America Civil War four out of four stars. Hands down, it is that fantastic in my opinion. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Captain America Civil War. And I would also love to thank WWE Fan0599 who did that intro with me for this review. The intro was actually his idea, so I have to give credit where credit is due. That intro wasn't my idea, it was his idea. So if you guys want to check out his channel, I will leave a link in the description below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power America!